Welcome back. Let's look at problem number 33. In problem number 33, we want to find the derivative of f at the point a if the function f of x is equal to the square root of 2x plus 1 and a is 4. Okay, and by now we're probably getting the idea that, okay, we know what we mean by the derivative of f at a. In other words, what's the slope of this function? at a, and how we find it is f prime of a is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h. Okay, we know what a is. a is 4, so I could rewrite this. This is the limit as h goes to 0 of f of 4 plus h minus f of 4 all over h. <clears throat> okay, so now that we've got this all set up, now we need to plug 4 plus h in for x, and we need to plug 4 in for x to get my f of 4 plus h and my f of 4. So if I plug in 4 plus h for x up here, this is what I'll get. So I get the limit as h goes to 0 of square root of 2 times 4 plus h plus 1. So that's f of 4 plus h. Then I need to look at minus f of 4. So minus, if I plug 4 in up here, I get 2 times 4, which is 8, plus 1 is 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. So I need to subtract 3, all divided by h. Uh, I could rewrite this really quick to make it a little more clean. This is the limit as h goes to 0 of, if I multiply this out, let's see what I get. I get 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9, and 2 times h. So I get the square root of 2h plus 9 minus 3 divided by h. Now, something a lot of students would really love to be able to do is to take the square root of this guy plus the square root of 9, which would give 3, and then take 3 minus 3 is 0, and I'd just be left with the square root of 2h. You can't do it, okay? If you're... If the two numbers here are separated by a plus, you can't break this up into two square roots, so don't try. Okay, so what we can do, though, is since this has a radical on the top, is we could multiply the top and the bottom of this thing by the conjugate of the top. And what I mean by that is let's multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 2h plus 9 plus 3 over the square root of 2h plus 9 plus 3. Okay, if we multiply the top and the bottom by this value, let's see what comes out. Notice I didn't do anything but multiply this by the number 1, and that's perfectly legal to do. <coughs> okay. When I multiply this, I get the square root of 2h plus 9 times the square root of 2h plus 9, which is 2h plus 9. Then I get this guy times 3 and this guy times minus 3. So I get 3 of these minus 3 of these, which is 0 of those, so I'm not even going to write it down. Then I get negative 3 times 3, which is minus 9, divided by h times the square root of 2h plus 9 plus 3. Notice on top I have 2h plus 9 minus 9, so the 9's cancel, and I'm left with the following. The limit as h goes to 0 of, on top I have 2h, and on the bottom I have h times square root of 2h plus 9 plus 3. The 
H's cancel, and I'm left with the limit as H goes to zero. On top, I just have a two, and on the bottom, I have the square root of two H plus nine plus three. As h goes to 0, this is perfectly fine. It doesn't cause division by 0 at all. So go ahead and plug in 0 for this h. That means that this whole thing becomes 0. And I'm left with 2 over the square root of 9 plus 3. Of course, the square root of 9 is 3. So this is 2 over 3 plus 3, or 2 over 6, otherwise known as one third. So what did we just figure out? We figured out that if I have this function square root of 2x plus 1 and I want to evaluate what is the derivative of this function at a equals 4, I plug it in, I do some work, and I figure out that the slope at the a value or x value 4 is one third.